Okay, and, and finally, as a little bit of an intro and, and a catch-up, let's talk about the use of line drawings for organic chemistry because this is a shorthand notation that organic chemists use um, constantly as a way to save some time. Okay, and what we do is we draw lines to represent carbon chains, and the definition is that any end point of a line represents a carbon, and any intersection or bend, I should, or bends, represent a carbon atom. Sometimes it'll look more like a bend. Okay, so for example, this, car this carbon chain has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons. So the way that this can be represented is we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this zigzag line or line drawing notation represents eight carbons. This end carbon, this end point is a carbon and any bend here or intersection of these two lines, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and uh, what we do is we, we draw the lines to represent the carbons and then we omit the hydrogens that are attached to those carbons. And we can do that because we know that carbon likes to have four bonds to be stable. Any neutral carbon is going to have four bonds. And so, uh, you know, stable one that we're going to see. And so, uh, we, we know that this end carbon has just one bond shown to, to a carbon. We know the other three bonds must be to hydrogen. So this must be a CH3. Any end line, any, any uh, line that ends in just at a point is a CH3 group. Okay, and this carbon, what, is, what do you know this carbon looks like? It has two bonds to carbon, so the other two bonds must be to hydrogen. This is what a CH2 looks like. So very quickly we can draw very complex organic molecules uh, by using this notation, and, uh, but, but we need to gain some experience with that and we need to recognize that there's a lot of hydrogens on this structure that are just not being shown. So this organic molecule, this eight carbon organic molecule is known as octane. We're gonna be getting into uh, some of this nomenclature down the road and, and uh, we've heard of octane. That's one of the components of gasoline. You have the octane reading when you, uh, when you fill your car up. And so this is one example of you know, an organic molecule being a good fuel. Uh, th these are some of the compounds that we use in our, in our car. Uh, now what do we do if we have an atom other than carbon? Well, we just draw that atom. So we have a two carbon chain, one, two, and then we have an oxygen attached to that. Now this hydrogen we have to include because it's not a car, it's, we only omit the hydrogens attached to carbon. So all other hydrogens are shown. So this represents this structure. This is called ethanol or ethyl alcohol. This is the alcohol. There are many alcohols we'll, we'll learn um, as, a, as a class of compounds. But uh, this is the alcohol that is grain alcohol. That is the kind that, uh, that is, is drinkable. This, this molecule, we can redraw this as a line drawing. All we would be doing is, is replacing those carbons. So if we have a double bond, if we have a multiple bond, we just connect two points with, uh, with a double line instead of a single line. And uh, this molecule is called acetic acid. And this is the uh, compound that's in vinegar that gives it its characteristic smell and taste. So this, this, these carboxylic acid groups like these we'll find uh, are, have acidity to them. That's what gives it that bite and kind of burns a little bit when you taste vinegar. So there's, again, organic chemistry and flavors and fragrances. Um, how would we represent this one? Well, we have a CO double bond, and then we have a carbon, and then we have a double bond to another carbon. So you could draw it this way, or you could draw it, doesn't matter what angle we do, we're going to be showing actually how these molecules can kind of rotate around and, and achieve different shapes and conformations. Uh, and a lot of times in this particular case we like to show this hydrogen. So this is kind of the one uh, exception to the rule where we leave off the hydrogens usually shown. This hydrogen when it's attached to a CO double bond um, then, then a lot, we usually draw it that way. It's acceptable to leave it off, but don't be surprised when you see it on there still. And uh, carbons not only can make very long chains, but they can also form rings, so we'll have cyclic compounds. So when we have a six-membered ring like this, we simply draw a hexagon, 
So, so cyclic compounds are very easy to draw with line drawings by just drawing the polygon, a pentagon, or a, or a square. Um, and this also has three double bonds, so we would just show that every other carbon is connected by two bonds. This is, an, and we can leave off all these hydrogens. We don't need to do that. We know because there are one, two, three bonds shown, the, there must be a fourth bond, and that's to, to hydrogen. So this would be the representation of benzene. This molecule is called benzene. That is uh, an interesting molecule. And uh, th this is actually known to be carcinogenic. That means it causes cancer. This is, benzene is one of the many dozens of carcinogenic compounds that are in cigarette smoke. Uh, and we'll be seeing chemistry of, of benzene and related compounds down the road. And then, uh, you know, some of the exercises that you'll want to do is, is being able to convert from condensed formulas to line drawing back and forth to get some experience because you really want to become fluent in these line drawings. It's going to save you so much time down the road, and you're also going to have to be able to work with them, so you need to be able to interpret them. So, for example, this guy, this, this is pretty complex, but we have a carbon with three CH3 groups. So here's that carbon, and we just draw three lines coming off to represent those CH3s. And then he's attached to a carbon. And see how this, th these carbons have no hydrogens on here? That tells me that there's a triple bond between those carbons. There's no other, oh, I forgot we're doing a line drawing here. There's a triple bond between those carbons because there's no hydrogens. And then we have another carbon with two chlorines on it. So very funny looking line drawing uh, for, for a, a complex molecule, that, but the, you know, this condensed formula takes a lot of deconvoluting as you work it out as well. So, so um, we're going to be spending a lot of time talking about how to draw Lewis structures and, and come up with these, these um, various line drawings and, and formulas. So, so uh, this is just a brief introduction into the, the process and the rules. But what's nice is now that you have an understanding of what these line, these line drawings uh, represent, now we can take a look at some examples of just how diverse organic molecules can be.